Everybody say, Rejoice in, Rejoice in the Lord. And we're going to talk about what that means because it doesn't mean rejoice in your circumstances, rejoice in how much money you have, rejoice in because people like you. It's rejoice in the Lord. And then I love this. He says, To write the same things to you is no trouble to me, and it is safety for you. You know, as a Bible teacher, sometimes I get concerned about saying the same thing again and again, or especially like in writing books. I've written about 125 books, and so there's only so many subjects in the Bible. And so sometimes when I'm writing, I think, well, this was in a book that I wrote 10 years ago or 12 years ago, or sometimes I teach so much, I can't remember, did I preach that or did I write it or, you know, did I say it on television or what? And so I had to get over being concerned that if people heard something more than once, they weren't going to like it. And what Paul said encourages me because he said, I don't get tired of telling you the same stuff over and over. You know why? We don't get it the first time or the second time or the third. And even if we do, we forget it. By the time, I mean, you know, we could hear a message once a month on the mind and need it every single time. We could hear a message on the mouth once a month and need it every single time that we hear it. So you may hear some of the same things from me, even things that I've already said on Friday night or this morning, but the more you hear the same thing, the more likely you are to remember it. So I don't apologize if I've said this before, what I'm going to say here in a few minutes. And then he says, look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. Now, who was he talking about when he was talking about dogs? Well, he was really, he was talking about Jewish people who weren't going along with this new faith in Christ, and they kept trying to bring people back under the law, and especially the law of circumcision. That was really, really big for them. That was the, the sign of the old covenant. And you have to remember that under the old covenant, everything was based on controlling behavior through laws, rules, and regulations. But under the new covenant, everything changes and God changes the nature of man so that he no longer needs laws and rules and regulations because he now has a new heart that wants to do the right thing. The only thing we have to do is feed ourselves enough of the word that the inner man becomes stronger than the outer man. You know, sin is never going to die. We die to sin, but sin will be alive as long as you're alive. And so we're always going to be tempted at varying times about different things, but we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can resist that temptation, but only if you keep feeding your spirit man and don't feed your flesh. Every time we give in to the flesh, we feed it. Every time we say no to it, it gets weakened more and more. You know, you can kill even a weed by not feeding it. And so what we, you know, every time that you give in to arguing with somebody because you can't stand to not be right, you're feeding your flesh and making it stronger. But every time you can be willing to be wrong, even though you may think you're right, you're not feeding that flesh and it gets a little bit weaker and a little bit weaker. So he says, now we are the circumcision those of us who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Under the new covenant, there's still a circumcision, but it's a circumcision of the heart. God wants the, the fleshiness of the old heart to be cut off, so we're operating in the Spirit. And he said, there's a circumcision that's taken place in your life when you worship God by the Spirit and in the Spirit. Circumcision under the Old Covenant was literally a physical cutting away of unnecessary flesh. And that's exactly what God wants us to do, only in the Spirit. How many of you are with me? You understand? Okay. So, 
This epistle of Philippians is considered to be the epistle of joy. And I've said this in every session, but Paul mentions joy or rejoicing 19 times in the four chapters of Philippians. Do you know how important joy is? It's not just a matter of having joy so you can feel good, but joy is like doing warfare with the devil. Everything that the devil tries to do is to bring us down, down, down in your mood, down in how you feel, down in your hope and expectations, down, down, down. But everything about Jesus is up and he wants us to have joy because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy, not of circumstances, but of the Lord. Well, circumstances. Wow, if we just had no difficulties due to people in our life that are hard to get along with, or circumstances that are difficult, it would be so easy to be filled with joy. But then the joy we had would not be the joy of the Lord, it would be the joy of good circumstances. But that's not real life. Nobody's going to have everybody love them all the time. You're always going to run into people that are difficult to get along with. And if you're not running into somebody that's difficult to get along with, then you're being hard to get along with and somebody's having to, <laughs> to deal with you. I know that's hard to believe, but believe it or not, sometimes you are hard to get along with, just like I am. And um, so it's not reality to think that all of our circumstances are going to be great. And... Uh, you know, I used to just keep wishing that the world would change, if, if life would just get better, if, if the world would change. And then finally, I got it. I don't know why it takes us so many years to get it, but God doesn't remove all the hard circumstances or the hard people, but he uses them to change us. How are we going to learn to love everybody if everybody's lovable? There's no trick to that. I mean, that, that's easy. It's not hard to be good to somebody that's being good to you. But yes, we are asked to do hard things. And when we do the right thing, while we don't want to, we're crucifying the flesh. When you do the right thing, when you don't feel like doing the right thing, that's when you're growing spiritually. When it's easy for you to do something, you don't grow. You may be enjoying growth that you've already gained through doing something difficult, but remember that. Like, if somebody's not treating you right, but by the grace of God, you go ahead and treat them right, it's not easy, but you're growing spiritually while you're doing that. And not only are you growing spiritually, you're also giving the devil a black eye. How many of you want to give the devil a black eye? All right. How many of you, the devil has given you a rough time in life and you, you really, really, really want to get him back? Okay, I'm going to tell you how to do it. There's only one way to get the devil back. Only one. You can't beat him up. You can't make him disappear. One way. And the Bible tells us what it is in Romans 12, 21. We overcome evil with good.